Okay, we are going to get ready to go on into solving equations now. All this work with integers and fractions all build up to where we are today. We've got one more skill to learn before we actually get involved in solving these equations. Okay, and that skill is combining like terms with a distributive property as well. So first of all, as we look at combining like terms, first of all, we need to learn what is a term. Okay, so terms, what are they? Term is an expression consisting of a number a variable or a combination of numbers and variables connected by multiplication or division. Okay, that's your definition of a term. Like terms are terms that have the same variable with the same exponent. So let's look first at just simple terms. Here's an example of terms. 5x, 5 times x, 5 divided by x, x divided by 5, x times y, x squared, y to the third power. All those things are terms because they're connected, either they're individual or they're connected by multiplication or division. Okay? Those are what terms are. None of these we have here except for these two would be considered like terms because these two have the same variable and the same exponent. If there's no exponent listed, it means that they have the same exponent. It's a 1. Now, this one is x times y, but that's two variables. This is one variable. And the reason why x to the second power and x squared and x are not the same is this is x times x. And this one is just simply x. See, this isn't the same as that. So it's important to understand what makes them like and what makes them different. Now, in actuality, we've actually experienced like terms already. Back in elementary school, when you were adding numbers such as 500s, eight tens and three ones, could you add five plus eight plus three and get the number 16? Was that actually correct? Could you do that? No, you couldn't do that. And the reason you could not do that is why? Five hundredths isn't the same place value as eight tens 
or three ones. In actuality, to add those, you actually had to write what it was, five hundred, eight tens, which is eighty, and three ones. Now, five hundred means five hundred ones, eight tens, or eighty is eight, eighty ones, and three ones. Now, they're like terms, and so we can add them according to their place value, giving 583. This is an example of like terms that you never even knew about because you didn't think about it that way. Now, what did we just do when we talked about fractions? Adding and subtracting fractions required what? It required the same denominator, right? And you couldn't add and subtract them unless they had the same denominator. You couldn't combine them. And without that same denominator, they were not like terms. With the same denominator, they are like terms. So it's really important to understand that you've had this already, just not taught as a like term. So let's look at some things that might possibly be like terms. Let's see if we can identify them. 2x, 3y, 4x, 5y, and 3x squared, okay? So what is like terms in this series of terms? Well, 2x, and 4x are like terms. They're the same. The same variable, the same exponent. It would be same, like saying two apples and four apples. They're the same kind of fruit. They're the same thing. 3y and 5y. Again, let's say these are carrots. Okay? They're the same stuff, the same thing. And then I have a 3x squared, and it isn't like anything. It's all by itself. So we can do things with these like terms. We can add and we can subtract these like terms. As long as they are the same, we can add and subtract them. If they are not the same, we cannot. <coughs> okay, so let's look at this. x plus 5x. What does that equal? Well, 3x means I have three of these x's added together, plus five of these x's added together, and therefore I end up with eight of these x's. Thus, 3x plus 5x equals 8x. So what are we doing when we're adding? or subtracting, you're dealing with the coefficient, which is the number that multiplies the variable or is in front of the variable. Those coefficients are added or subtracted. So now let's look at 4x minus 3x. Okay, we know we're going to have x. 4 minus 3 is 1x, or we can write it as x. Both of these answers would be acceptable. So we have possibilities. Okay, let's get more complex. 5x minus 6y plus 8x plus 9y. Okay, so now let's look at combining those like terms. Identify first. 5x plus 8x. And notice I put that operation symbol with it because this has to stay with this. So 5x plus 8x is equal to 13x. Minus 6x or negative 6x plus, no, sorry, negative 6y plus 9y is plus 3y. 
And notice, I don't have a one number answer. Why? Because I have variables, and the variables don't permit you to have a one term or one number answer. Okay, let's look at another one. Looking at that, again, identify your like terms first. So when we identify, we have a 2x squared minus 5x squared. So 2 minus 5 gives you your negative 3x squared. And notice the x squared didn't change. You keep that with you exactly like it is. Now I have a 3x minus a 9x. 3 minus 9 is a negative 6x. And now I have a minus 10 and a plus 20. Negative 10 plus 20 is a plus 10. Again, go back to your integer rules. Remember, that was our first lesson. You see why you needed it, because you're going to use it now. Okay? So, therefore, that is the answer. We've combined our like terms. And notice we still have the same variables as before. We didn't get rid of them. Okay, now you're ready for the distributed property. And distributed property, once it takes place, you sometimes have to combine like terms. So we'll look when we do and when we don't. Okay, this is the distributed property. If I have something times something inside, a times B plus C. If you think of the word distribute, if I have a bag of oranges and I give it to somebody and say distribute that to everybody in your family, what would you do? Well, you would take your bag of oranges and you would give every person in your family an orange, right? That's the same thing that's happening here, only my action of distribution is a multiplication. So this is A times B, a times B, my sign stays according to what it is, A times C. We also have the same thing for a subtraction, B minus C. So this is equal to A times B minus A times C. So now let's look at some actual numbers. 6 times x plus 3. 6 times x is equal to 6x. And then 6 times 3, and it's a positive. And I'm going to write it out. So this is equal to 6x plus 18. Okay. Now let's look at it as a negative. 5 times x minus 4. Again, 5 times x is a 5x. And 5 times a negative 4, which is a negative 20. Because 5 times 4 is 20, I have one negative. 
thinking 5 times 4 is a negative 20, which is the same thing as minus 20. Okay? Now, let's look at a little more complex. Well, before we do that one, let's do one more. What's the negative of x minus 2? Well, this negative is the same thing as saying a negative 1. So a negative 1 times x is equal to a negative 1x or a negative x. Negative 1 times the negative 2 makes a positive 2. So this is a negative x plus 2. The reason I wanted to do that is because the next one puts a negative in, so it's important to understand that. Okay, so I have 4 times x plus 5 minus 2 times x minus 3. Okay, so again, 4 times x is a 4x. Four, 4 times 5 is a plus 20 because it's a positive 20. Negative 2 times x is a minus 2x. And a negative 2 times that negative 3 is a plus 6. So you see how important it is to understand that multiplication of integers and not to drop your negative signs off. It's so easy to lose those negative signs. Now notice, when we did all of these, when we finished our distribution, we were finished because there are no like terms here. None of these are alike, okay? But this one is not finished, and it's because we do have like terms. 4x minus 2x is a positive 2x. 20 plus 6 is a plus 26. So you always have to finish it all the way down to the end. Okay? Another thing you're going to do with this part of the lesson is you're going to start learning how to put things together from words to number expressions, which you will then use in words to equations. So these are important things that you're working on right now with this. So let's look first at some words that we will use. And I recommend that you start this process because more words will be added in all the time. I recommend you build yourself a chart. And you're going to have plus, minus, multiplication, division, equal, and then I'm going to put another small category down here to fit it in, of grouping symbols, okay? Because there are things that indicate that, all right? So let's look first at what are some words that tell you it's going to be addition, more than, plus, and these are just the most common ones. You're going to run into others too, so start your chart and keep adding. Less than, minus, and the word difference. These are real common words indicating subtraction. Of course, you've got addition and subtraction as well. And this would be things like added to. And this one would then become subtracted from. Would be common. Okay, multiplication. All is a real common one for multiplication times, uh, multiplies, okay, division, 
divides divided by is a common one. So not as many do I know for division. Equals. Of course, the word equals is common. Produces is another common one. Uh, is is maybe the most common word used in that. Okay, parentheses. You will see the expressions, the sum of, and this indicates a parentheses with the two numbers that are given on either side of your div uh, addition sign. The difference of. And again, it's the same thing with a subtraction sign in the middle. So this, the sum of, the difference of, that series, that, that little expression indicates something is being put inside parentheses. So now, let's look at the words and how to translate them into expressions. Five more than, and usually these would be written as the number as five, F-I-V-E, instead of the number five. But I'm saving space. Six times a number, okay? This word, a number, indicates your variable, and I'm going to use N for it, for number. Okay, more than, what does that indicate? It indicates addition. Times indicates multiplication. So we have five plus six times a number. I don't need to write the multiplication sign down because six n indicates six times n. Okay? Five less than a number. Okay, when we see this, what is this saying? Is my number more than five? Am I taking five from my number? Or am I taking the number from five? This is important. Five less than a number means my number and five is being subtracted from that number. It's because it's going to be five less than that number. So it's n minus five. It's a little flip to it that confuses people. Five times the sum of a number and three. Now this is what I was talking about. Five times is that five, the times is the multiplication. I'm going to use this form of multiplication. Why? I'm using the parentheses form of multiplication because the sum of indicates the things that follow it have to go inside that, multiple, that parentheses. So a number, there's my n and 3. And notice the order here follows the order here. OK? And now we'll do the same thing, only with a difference. Uh, or we'll do this one. The difference of eight and a number divided by two. Okay? This is your division. The difference of indicates a parentheses a no, of no, 8 and a number. So it's 8 minus n. There's your variable. This is first. That one second. Difference means it's a subtraction divided by 2. Or I could use this one, 8 minus n over 2. These are equivalent to each other, okay? Okay, so 
So there you go. The other thing they might ask you to do is to take the numbers and write it in words. So if I have 4 plus 2x squared, this would be 4 more than 2 times a number squared, or you could say the square of a number. 2 times a square of a number. Both of those are correct ways to say it. Okay? So that gives you the other aspect of this. And from there, we're going to go on to solving equations. Got to stop it.